So now we will give a demonstration on the removal of entities. Um, as I said before, entities can exist both in the aura, but also they can nestle in the body. And here I will be removing an entity which has burrowed into the body. The first thing to notice is that uh, at the place where the entity is, the body has um, a kind of a swirl in its life force. So it feels very similar to an inflammation. So if you start to feel just a, uh, not a specific meridian, but just the body's energy, you'll feel here that it is relatively smooth. And as I move my hand here towards the third chakra, the energy becomes very agitated. On this side it is smooth, but on her right side there is a very agitated energy. So such an agitation can mean that there is indeed a physical uh, problem, there might be pain, there might be an infection, there might be a wound. Uh, but it can also be a purely energetical problem that the energy body is being disturbed or wounded and not so much the physical body. And um, if you find such a thing, it's not always an entity, but it can be. So once we have found a spot, it becomes very important to isolate it because the entity can move through the body so if it, now it is located here, but if I start digging for it and disturbing it, it might walk off into some other organs or to some other part of the body and it will hide there, so entities can escape you. So what you should do before you try to catch the entity, you can also try to be very quick and decisive, but that can also be a little bit disturbing. But what we should do is to isolate it as much as possible. So I don't start working on the entity itself, <coughs> but on the area around. But I want to form a globe of white light around the affected spot. So that I'm kind of encapsulating it, and keeping it from moving should make sure that you also remove this globe at the end of the treatment because it also disturbs the client's energy body. So now that I'm sure that it cannot escape, I have to try to catch it. And the best way to do that is actually to attract it to you, to present better food than the client is giving. Uh, this specific entity is feeding itself on anger. Um, entities always feed themselves which energies which are not completely controlled by the host. So the client is not completely in control of her anger, which invites entities to come in and to feed off it, to work with her energy, to stimulate it. So what I want to do is to try to pull it out of the body as much as possible by generating anger with my own hand and as I do so I can feel that in a way parts of the entity are now wrapping themselves around my hand to suck up the energy so it's a little bit like tentacles of an octopus grabbing my hand and trying to squeeze it, to drain it, to get all the power they can from it. So once the entity has attached itself firmly to my hand, I can try to remove it from the client. And to do that, I also try to push it. So the kind of the globe we put here, I lift the globe as well as I pull with my hand. So it gets pushed by the globe upwards and outwards and pulled by the hand, upwards and outwards. So my right hand is making contact with the globe of light, while my left hand is pulling the entity.
it's important to do this slowly, not to damage it by yanking it too much, because then also the energy body of the client can get damaged more than necessary. It's always a little bit intrusive to both having an entity and removing it. So, now that we have removed the entity, we can send it down to uh, the world where it needs to be. So, for that purpose, we have a little uh, drain here. So, move it slowly to the drain. And there, let it be sucked down to its own dimension and away from your hand. Make your hand also more neutral also fill it with white light to remove the last parts and push them out of your own hand. So once the spot is clean it's also important that you talk to your client so that they will know that they're in a way inviting entities by having a lack of self-awareness or self-control and also try to help to heal the spot so that they don't immediately attract a new entity. So to do that first we have to fill up the cavity which is left where the entity's energy was and which is now just a gaping hole in the energy body. So to do that I generate golden light with my hand nice golden energy which is very neutral very harmonizing also a nice healing energy in this case I will add a little bit of blue to compensate a little bit for the chaotic energies which are there so that will help for a stronger control mechanism to evolve in the third chakra I just start in a way massaging in this golden energy and slowly filling up the hole in the energy body. The reason that I'm using golden light is that energies with this, with this frequency can very easily transform into the body's own energies. So it is very useful if you need to implant something. Also if you perform an initiation it's also very good to work with golden light to help the initiation energies to attach and to merge with the client's energies better. So if the area has been filled up nicely, it's always good also to look if there are not more entities hanging around uh, because entities can uh, multiply just bacter like bacteria can. So make sure you do a little scan. Also try to get the last pieces of the heavier energies which are from this lower dimension the entity comes from. Try to suck them out. Really to clean the wound. It's pretty clean already, but there are still a little bit of energies which can be removed. So now that the area is clear, 
now we start stimulating the life force to help the body to heal that part of the body so you start to work with the meridians and increase the strength of their flow stimulate the meridians which run through the affected area so here I'm working on a small intestine meridian which also gives a little bit of an indication of the weak points so in the case of this client the lack of control of the aggression has to do also a lot with lack of confidence because it's right in the middle of the small intestine meridian so there's no confidence in others which leads to aggressive reactions but on the other side the meridian is very smooth so the self-confidence is not the problem but it often happens that when people have had traumatic experiences that they form like an allergy or an intolerance because people can trigger their old pains their old patterns and often when people are traumatized uh, they also pick up entities so traumatic experiences by definition too much to deal with too much to control which means that the unguided energy will attract entities but ultimately by living through the trauma and gaining control the person can strengthen themselves so it's a little bit of a gamble always do you come out stronger out of a traumatic situation or weaker so we keep on strengthening energy in this area until it becomes more or less equal again more or less smooth again you will see that also the golden energy in a way starts to fade start to diffuse itself as the client's own energy starts taking its place again so graphically you could say it's a little bit of a chasm and now there are, uh, yeah, you could say, rope bridges spanning the chasm, so our own energy can pass through it already. And it's kept from, in a way, falling into the chasm or going into chaos by the golden energy which is surrounding the energy tubes going through the hole. So now that the basic level of healing has been done, we can try to set the client on their way to um, really healing this pattern, healing this part of the body. Uh, so to do that, we want to provide a little bit of a, a mold for her energy to, to follow. And in this case, we will just duplicate the energy from her left side to her right side. Because the, her left side is okay energetically so we want to have similar patterns extend to here so what we'll simply do we will bridge the gap this hand will be accepting energies this hand will be giving energies and in this case will let a little bit of the energy flow through my own body so it goes in the right hand out the left but mainly I try to pull the energy within the body so this hand is kind of pushing the energy and this hand is pulling the energy so that the energy will move more towards the right hand side of the body we 
if on the other side there would not have been uh, a healthy pattern and sometimes it becomes necessary to implant a healthy pattern which you can either create or you can sometimes duplicate your own energy if it matches the client's energy well enough. So the energy level I'm working with is a bit higher now. So I uh, started to work with really low vibrations because this is where the entity was. Then I moved up to the life force and now I'm working with her prana energy. Which is in a way just also the energy from which her chakra is constructed. So the kind of prana energy has moved now, so there is sufficient of a pattern here. So now I will stimulate the life force again so that pattern can get uh, a little bit more strong and stabilize the area even more. So I stimulate the life force again. So often the spot also corresponds to a weak spot in the aura. So often when uh, the entity will yeah, work its way through the aura closer and closer to the body, but also the path which it followed to get to the body will also still be weak. So at the aura will recover once the body is recovered, but you can also strengthen the aura directly to make sure that a reinfection doesn't occur too easily. Well, this concludes our demonstration.